Hello, and in this video, we're going to go through the procedure of how to measure the focal length of your glasses. Don't go and start collecting data upon completing uh, the viewing of this video. There's a little bit more to it that's discussed in the next section, but that doesn't really make sense if you haven't seen the procedure already first. So we're going to talk through the procedure in this video. Uh, what you're going to need for this experiment is some paper. Lined is beneficial, although not required. So lined or graph paper is best, but like I said, blank paper or even a whiteboard will do if you don't have that. Uh, you'll, of course, need the glasses that you are going to uh, try to measure the focal length of. Um, if, like these glasses, your focal lengths are different on the two glasses, just choose one of the two lenses. Uh, make sure you choose the one that doesn't have the astigmatism, if one has an astigmatism. Uh, astigmatisms make this a little bit trickier, so choose a lens without an astigmatism if you can. You can do it with an astigmatic lens, but it's, it's easier if you don't. You'll also, of course, need a ruler, metric as always, and pens. Um, multiple colors are helpful, so here I've got a, a pencil, a red pen, and a blue pen but if you, even just one color will probably be fine. And then you need an object to look at. Your object needs to be small enough that you can see it through the glasses and it doesn't stick up. So it needs to be small enough that it totally fits within the field of view of the lens of your glasses. And ideally it should have a flat uh, front to it. So things like uh, USB sticks uh, look, work quite well because they're you know, relatively short. So if I look through the glasses, it doesn't stick out in any way. Uh, rings that have flat edges on the front work quite well. You don't want to use something round like a nickel though, because this is round on the front. It makes finding the position a little bit trickier. Something with a flat edge is better. For the purposes of these videos, I'm going to use a USB stick because I found that that works uh, quite well. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to set up your glasses. Um, I like to use one of the lines on my uh, paper sort of to, to mark it. So I'm going to mark you know, some spot on the page. This is why the line paper is a little bit convenient because it makes it easy to know where you put the glasses. So I'm going to use that as my glasses location. And then I'm going to define a spot behind my glasses, and I want it to be at least a good five centimeters or so behind. So uh, I am going to put it um, about here. So I'm going to find a spot about five centimeters behind. This is nine lines on my uh, notebook paper here. And so I'm going to use this spot. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to hold the pen at that spot and then look through the glasses, I'll show you in a second, and take our object and slide it forward until it appears to be at the same distance as the pen. So let's see what that actually looks like. So here I've gone and changed our perspective. You can see the pen and you can see the USB stick through the glasses. I'm going to slide the USB stick forward until it appears to be at the same distance as the pen. Uh, make sure you use two eyes because that's how you get depth perception. So don't try to wink this. You know, use actually two eyes. And that's getting close. There we go. That looks about right. So now my pen and my USB stick appear to be at the same distance. So I'm going to take my pen and drag it across the front of my USB stick like so. OK. Now let's go back to a top down view. So here we are back at a top down view of the final result. And you can see that the pen and the USB stick are not actually at the same uh, position. The USB stick is about one line behind where the pen was located. So even though they appear to be at the same distance through the glasses, they're not the same distance at all. This is because of the lens. 
So now we can go through and identify everything. So this distance, so this line is the location of my glasses. This distance here is my image distance. Okay. So label it. While this distance, which is a different number, is my object distance. I and O. Okay, and you can see that they are a little bit different. Now you'll need to go through and measure each of these, of course, using your ruler. And then what you're going to do is you're going to repeat several times with this particular image distance. Now, the way I've been doing it is to take my glasses and slide it back like two lines on the piece of paper, switch colors. This is where the, the colors come in handy. I'm doing two lines everywhere makes it a little bit easy. Uh, so now my image distance is going to be two lines back. Repeat the experiment. Find out where the uh, object appears to be at the same distance as the pen, right? This is the object, so that's always going to be your object distance. This is where the object appears to be, so that is our image distance. So I would do until it appears to be about right, come across, mark, and repeat that some number of times that you need to figure out, and that will be discussed in the next section. Once you've completed that, then you're going to go and do a different image distance altogether. So when you're done with this, and you've done some number of trials with that image distance, you're going to repeat the whole process with a different image distance. So this was here. Move it back a little bit more. So a new image distance. Slide forward, determine where they look the same. And so that'll give us a new image distance and a new object distance. It's important to do multiple image distances because of how human perception works. It's a little weird. And so having multiple image distances makes sure that there uh, helps compensate for that effect. OK, so you're going to do about uh, five different image distances with some number of trials that you will determine for each image distance. All right, this concludes this video.